love someone, you want good things to happen for them. You want them to chase their dreams, to meet great people, and to live a life of adventure. Whether it is a best friend, a sibling, distant cousin, or parent, you want them to live a life that they can be proud of especially when they get the chance to make dreams come true later in life. Unfortunately, chasing your dreams doesn't always lead to a happy ending. Sometimes it doesn't lead to an ending at all. My name is Brianne and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the 2000 disappearance of Colleen Wood, a 51-year-old woman who went out on the sailing trip of a lifetime and disappeared during the holidays. It was during this time of year when Colleen Wood disappeared. And her vanishing during the holidays was actually how her family knew that something was really wrong. But before we go into all of that, let's talk about what led up to her disappearance. Colleen was a woman in her 50s who was living a great life in Florida. She had a job down at a local marina and had started thinking about her dream life. A life of time spent sailing across the ocean. Or at least around the coast. In her searches, she came across something interesting. An ad requesting a sailing partner. The man who ran the ad was a very impressive and experienced sailor. From his Ivy League degree to his history of fame and incredible wealth, he sounded like he had it all. All that he needed was someone to sail with. His name was John Paul Sr., and he seemed just as eager to partner up as Colleen was. He introduced her to his boat, which was a 55-foot vessel and home called the Island Girl. Colleen fell in love with him and the boat, and shortly after, she agreed to move on to the boat with him. It all happened really quickly, but Colleen seemed smitten. It was as if her dream life was finally coming true. Of course, real life isn't a fairy tale. In real life, major life changes come with a surprising amount of admin work. After her move, John Paul convinced her to give up everything and lean in on sailing with him. She sold her home, her car, and everything else. All of the money she gave to John Paul to invest on her behalf. And then, to the horror of those who knew her, she quit her job to be John Paul's assistant. They were dating and began planning a grand sailing adventure. Then they departed. The last person to speak to Colleen was her former boss. At the time, Colleen was in Key West and was on land for a little while. She promised to show up for a Christmas party the next week, but she never made it. Christmas came and went without word from her. Her family tried to call only to learn that her phone was turned off because the bill was never paid. New Year's came and went without her. Her family knew that something was wrong, but they had no idea how to find her or even where to look. With the boat, she could be anywhere. All that they knew was who she was with. So they started looking for John. It was during their own investigation that they learned something fairly disturbing. John Paul Sr. was famous, a famous criminal, and a particularly nasty one at that. 
drug smuggling, an attempted murder on a former business partner, assaults against officers in prison. John Paul was a violent criminal, and he had finally received parole after being declined numerous years in a row. The year that he met Colleen. Wherever Colleen was, it seemed clear that she wasn't safe. When police found John Paul Sr., Colleen wasn't with him. This would start a new series of lies from Paul. He claimed she found a new guy to run off with and took her stuff and left, but her kids didn't buy it. Colleen loved John Paul and had seemed very happy with him. Later on, he claimed that they had an argument over an ex of his and that she broke up with him over it and left. And then he tried to say that she owed him a bunch of money and wasn't paying him back, so they fought over that. This last claim certainly seems pretty interesting, considering she had just given him all of the money that she had to invest on her behalf. How could she possibly owe him more than that, than the houses and the cars? And why would he help her if she owed him at all? It made no real sense, and it wasn't the only alarming evidence regarding money. Police tracked Colleen's bank account and learned that after her disappearance, someone had used her credit card dozens of times to withdraw over $40,000 in cash. No one believes that it was Colleen who made these transactions. And then police lost their chance of gathering any new evidence. John Paul Sr., who was very much still on parole, disappeared without a trace. Police are still looking for him, and they believe that he knows where Colleen is, or was. It is a commonly shared belief that Colleen was killed and likely thrown out to sea. The circumstances and evidence in all of this is fairly damning, and certainly seems to support the narrative that Colleen unwittingly found herself bunking with a murderer. But then we have to ask ourselves, why was she killed if it is true? Did she do her own research and learn the truth about Paul's past? A truth, perhaps, that he wanted to keep under wraps? Did she find out that all of the money that she gave him wasn't invested at all? Or was possibly invested in something completely illegal? After all, Paul was a known drug dealer, and all that money could have helped him set up his new... business, for lack of a better word. Given John Paul Sr.'s violent history, it would be too easy to simply chalk it up to his violent nature. But I don't know if I buy that alone. If he did kill her, I think it was because he, in his own mind at least, had a reason to. Maybe she found him out. Maybe she caught him doing something illegal and planned to report him. According to his son, John Paul Jr., who was interviewed while John Paul Sr. was in prison in the 90s, his dad was difficult to live with and would get frustrated when people didn't do things exactly how he liked them to be done. In fact, his son went on to say that he was working on unlearning the behaviors his father set the standard for, like yelling at his wife and losing his temper with her. Without being able to bring him in for questioning, police really can't ask more about the details surrounding Colleen's disappearance. But according to Auto Week, John Paul Sr. has been living in a yacht off the coast of Central America, carefully dodging any interest from law enforcement for decades now. By now, John Paul Sr. would be in his 80s, and might even be dead for all that we know. Colleen's family, however, is still waiting for those answers. 
So, if you would like to discuss the dangers of whirlwind romances, the best places to sail to in 2023, or you just want to tell me about your New Year's resolutions before you give up on them, feel free to contact me on Twitter or Instagram using the tag at that pod. Thanks, guys, and Happy New Year.